My name is Luke Schulman. I'm a lead data scientist with Data Robot. And so what we're going to walk through today is, is how you can actually combine a predictive forecast with generative AI so that you can really understand demand forecasting. So for the purposes of this demo, put yourselves in the shoes of running a medication distribution center or even a retail pharmacy chain. There are 75,000 medications available by prescription and over the counter in the United States. It's a ton of different product SKUs. And so this is applicable across all sorts of industries. We see dashboards like the one you're seeing here filled with dropdowns of product SKUs and market segments and different, different markets, different products. And they don't see the forecast that they're looking for. And more importantly, they don't understand what's really driving sales up or down or driving demand up or down. And this is something generative AI can really help with. We can combine it with a forecast so that stakeholders see something like this. So I'm just typing out exactly the products that we're looking for in the markets that we're looking for them. And then under the hood and behind the scenes, Data Robot and Google Cloud are orchestrating a whole ensemble of generative AI and predictive AI models to develop an answer to this question. So here we see a broad summary of the demand forecast for these types of products. But more importantly, we can see that the models have automatically selected the product SKUs, the individual drug medications, and grouped them together into the states and markets that we're looking for. But perhaps most importantly, we see why this forecast is trending up or trending down, specifically based on not just the volume of demand, but specific characteristics about the patients themselves whether it be their race, their age, or their gender, or the conditions that they're seeing. And all of that is highlighted and summarized both visually and with text so that we understand exactly what's driving that demand up or down. Together with Google Cloud, we're gonna walk through building out the components to make forecast applications like this really possible. So first, it actually is gonna start with all of our data back in BigQuery. So here I've actually pulled up BigQuery right here in the Google console. And you can see we actually have a table of medications and their start and stop dates. So literally when patients have picked up these medications and what supply that they have. And you can see we have a lot of data here. We have over 14 million prescription records that we're gonna be working on. On another table, we actually see specific characteristics about the products themselves, including these long, what are called indications and usage. This is actually what's printed on those those sheets that get included with your drugs when you pick them up in the pharmacy. We have thousands of medications across markets, across 50 states, for all of these patients. How are we gonna put that all together? Well, we have new functionality that actually integrates BigQuery right into Data Robot Workbench. So what I can do is I can go to add data here. I have my BigQuery connection automatically configured here and I can go and I can pull up that medication data that we were just looking at. And Data Robot will take a quick sample and give me a little preview of what we're looking at. But what I'm actually gonna hit is I'm gonna hit Wrangle here. And Wrangle is gonna allow me to preview different transformations to the data set that allow me to get it ready for a time series forecast. So here we can see our medications, why they were prescribed, their cost, when they were dispensed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna join in the patient information. And again, I can look right into my BigQuery data set and immediately pull up the table of the patients themselves. And I'm gonna join patient onto the patient ID. And I'm gonna add that to my recipe. I have this full recipe. And you can see, so not only did I join in patients, but I calculated the month in which these prescriptions occurred and then I aggregated them at the month level so that our final data set actually shows not just the product by its ID, but also the market where the prescription occurred. So every row on here is a market for a specific medication for sales in a specific month. And that's how we're gonna make our forecast. Now, the best part about this is how scalable and interactive it is. All this data remains on BigQuery and the recipe that I build up gets turned into SQL that runs directly on BigQuery. So we take advantage of BigQuery's speed and scalability 
to interact with data sets of unlimited size. And then when we're ready, we can go ahead and initiate a modeling project and actually use this data for our time series forecast. So that's actually what I've done in this tab here is I've kicked off our time series modeling project. So what we wanna do is we wanna select number of medications because that's our, that's our target is the number of medication sales per month. And I'm gonna go ahead and select time series modeling and I'm gonna select the month in which the prescription occurred as our, our kind of date field. I'm gonna hit start modeling and you can see data robots trained 24 different models and we're looking at the various scores of how these models perform. And what we can do is we can go in and look at for any particular market product segment, how is this forecast doing? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort this. So this is lisinopril in Arizona. Lisinopril is the top medication prescribed in the United States annually every year. Um, so this, in this market, which is the highest performing market in terms of sales, we can see that this forecast is actually quite accurate within 5% accuracy. Why don't we take this forecast and let's go on to the generative AI component. Now, one of the things that I mentioned is that we have in BigQuery, we have all of this data about what these medications are and what they're used for. And so we see these long paragraphs of text about where this medication should be prescribed. We could take advantage of Google Cloud's Vertex AI search to literally build our own search engine that can use this product information to help our forecast. So what I have here is I have a tab where you can see in Vertex AI search, we have actually staged all this data so that we've connected it to that BigQuery data we can pull up these indication statements and the active ingredients and the different classifications for each drug. And now we can interact with it almost as if we're interacting with Google search. So here I can say asthma medications and it'll pull back all the documents. These documents we can then use with a generative AI model to help group medications together to answer the stakeholders question. So when the stakeholder says they want blood pressure medications, we can use this Google search functionality to get all of the possible choices for blood pressure medications. And we can have the generative AI model summarize and choose the top medications that we should use in that grouping. And all of this is actually integrated into data robots, what we call our LLM playgrounds. So here, as you can see, we've listed Vertex AI search as our vector database. So it's actually calling Vertex AI search to pull in documents. And then we have this generative AI playground. And as you can see, it gives us a really good, clearly formatted list of possible medications that would match this query. And one of the best parts about data robots playgrounds is you can actually compare all of these strategies side by side and decide which one is working best. So on a simple prop like treatments for diabetes, we can see when we use the grounding information, we get outputs like this. When we don't use it at all, this is actually no grounding information, we get an output like this. How do we know that the generative AI is giving us something we can trust? Data Robot has these confidence scores right here that help to gauge the closeness of the response to the documents that have been supplied. And once we have a blueprint that we like, we can register and deploy that blueprint in just a few clicks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit register and now Data Robot's gonna generate all of the API code we need to integrate that blueprint with an application, right? So if I go here into our Data Robot model registry, you can actually see the templates that Data Robot used to call out to the Google APIs to do this. Remember there's several different models all contributing to this dashboard from the forecast to the vertex search to ultimately our whole prompt processing. All of those are monitored here on the Data Robot console. So you can see I'm monitoring actually over 140 deployed AI models using about 140,000 predictions per day. And I can go into these and I can look at how has the text of the prompts changed over time between now and a baseline period. And so we could see words like diabetes or AFib. These have been used significantly less 
since this model was deployed than when we were testing this model. We can even track the outputs from the generative LLM. So we can see it's starting to talk about significant increased projections and usage 